Hi, I'm here to talk to you about Alexandra disease. It is a rare disease thus far affecting about 500 people since its discovery in 1949. Although no prevalent statistics are available with such a low ca um, number of cases, this is obviously not a common disease. Um, this disease affects um, the white matter in the brain and is part of a larger group of neurological diseases known as leukodystrophies. This disease is typically found and diagnosed in childhood and infancy, although neonatal and adult cases have been discovered. Because of the severe nature of this disease, it is typically diagnosed in the early years of life and few survive into adulthood. Individuals typically have progressive psychomotor retardation with a loss of developmental milestones, megalencephaly and frontal bossing, seizures, hyperflexia and pyramidal signs, ataxia, and hydrocephalus secondary to aqueductal stenosis. This multitude of symptoms means a, short, a shorter life for those who suffer from the disease. However, the later the onset, the longer the life expectancy. Alexander disease is primarily di or diagnosed through MRI findings, and after the MRI findings, uh, genetic testing occurs looking for GFAP, which is the gene associated with Alexander disease. Um, unfortunately, though, after the diagnosis is confirmed, there's little left a uh, family can do for the patient, or doctors can do for the patient as well. Um, because of the rarity of this disease, there has been or there's not enough research to develop a specific treatment uh, for it, and drugs are prescribed to control like the seizures and such, and antibiotics are used to treat infection, but unfortunately still not much is done to uh, actually cure it. There's yet to be a cure. Uh, there are many resources uh, and support systems available for families to lean on to help educate and prepare them for a child with Alexander disease. Uh, a few of these support groups include uh, the United Leuco Dietastrophe Foundation, which is a nonprofit voluntary health organization that is dedicated to providing parents and their families with information about their, the disease of their child and assisting in identifying sources of, of medical care, social services, and genetic counseling, as well as establishing a communication network um, among families so families can interact with each other, share their information, their experiences. Um, and it also does increase public awareness um, as a, acting as an information source uh, for healthcare providers. Another one of these foundations is MOMS, which is Mothers United for Moral Support, and it's a national parent-to-parent -parent organization um, for parents or caregivers to provide, um, you know, support for child or their children with disabilities uh, of rare and not so rare diseases. Um, and then also. Uh, another one called the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, which conducts, fosters, coordinates, and guides research on the causes, preventions, diagnosis, um, and treatment of neurological disorders, as well as supports basic research in related scientific areas, um, as well as it provides grants and aids to public and private institutions and individuals in fields related to its areas of interest, including research projects, uh, program projects, and research grants. And obviously there are many more of these uh, res or support systems uh, you can find online, just like, uh, go to like Alexander Disease uh, Support Systems, and there are several groups that come up, and just lots of support. <laughs>